Welcome back. You want to see what happens when you train a 50 million parameter transformer on 200 episodes of data? That? Yeah, disappointing, but I don't think it discredits the idea. It's probably just a bug. If you just found this channel, Stringman is a household crane robot with a room scale reach that aims to give you the ability to pick and place any soft object in a room. And I'm proud to announce that I now have a small inventory of assembled robots for sale on Etsy and Tindy. Links in the description. Humanoid robots are coming, but they cost a lot of money, and they have a hard problem to solve, including balance, navigation, and battery swaps. And you'll also see arms bolted to tables, and another one of my favorite, the armed mop bucket. But an arm can only reach a tiny bit of table space. Stringman can reach an entire room, and it avoids the balance and navigation problems completely, while still being almost as cheap as a printed arm bolted to a table. It's completely open source, and you can print and build your own using our detailed step-by-step -step guides. Now, let's get into the technical update of this video, the AI. So far, I've only seen the slightest hint of it being attracted to socks. I've collected over 200 training episodes, and I've been running a lot of experiments on them. First, I tried ACT models, which start from a vision backbone, and I'm hitting model collapse, or maybe mean reversion. I'm not sure the correct term for this. Whether I use velocity control or position control, the model just learns to predict the average action from the data set. Second, I tried fine-tuning small VLA, which is a policy from Lay Robot that's already trained on tens of thousands of pick-and-place episodes with similar camera views. However, training it to control Stringman is a cross-embodiment problem. Small VLA is trained on the SO-101 arm. It, it outputs joint angles, and Stringman is a parallel cable robot that's controlled by a gantry position, a winch length, and a gripper angle. So we're asking it to generalize that from one robot to another, and 200 episodes just probably isn't enough to do that. So why is ACT failing if 50 episodes is enough for the SO-101 arm? I got three theories on why. First, hyperparameters or configuration settings. There could be just a different combination of settings that would work better for this data set. Second, maybe the data isn't clean enough. The data sets I've seen for SO-101 are usually very simplistic. There's nothing on the table other than the robot and the object being picked up, but my images show a cluttered bedroom. And finally, data may just be insufficient. I might need 10 times or 100 times more to make this work. That would be time consuming to collect, but not impossible. So while I keep running experiments with the AI, I've been focusing on the production and usability as well. I'm still making that custom FEP tether in my garage on a hand drill powered winder. The wire is two Teflon conductors with a braided fishing line. and my wire twister's barely holding together, so I really need to design a new one. I'm also trying to get the bomb cost as low as I can get it. The assembled cost of the pilot launch right now is $990, but check the video description for the exact value. That's there to cover $550 in materials, which most of which have to be imported with tariffs, and about 10 hours of assembly and some profit to recoup some of the investment. So to get that cost down, I've found that I can get by with only two cameras, and it does basically work, although it makes the calibration harder. But I can probably compute my way out of that problem. And I actually have a new design drafted that could get the material cost as low as $250 in theory, but that's on the other side of a lot of engineering effort. So I'm only going to pursue that if I see that the pilot version has some real market interest. So. To improve the usability, I've been adding various features to the control panel, such as a progress bar during auto calibration and automatic reconnects. I've also added a mode to the gamepad where the robot orbits the user no matter where they're sitting by using an April tag on the game controller to locate it in the room. I've also designed what I'm calling the saddle. This is a place for the robot to sit when powered off that keeps the lines up and out of the way while safely supporting it. Naturally, I'm also working on a self-park function. After not having a lot of luck with end-to-end -end models, I decided to go back to something purely perceptive. So what you see being tested here is a combination of a simple model that identifies the highest priority target on the floor and then uses IK to move the robot over it. It can position the bot within about 15 centimeters over a sock and uh, generally 
if there's not some shadow in the corner, it will chase a sock around the room, which is promising. So I'm going to go with this for now, but I will continue experimenting with end-to-end -end models periodically. Um, I'm also looking for interested beta testers, so if you want to install the robot in your own room and get a steep discount, feel free to get in touch with me directly. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned in for the next update.